From 18th century Bavarian origins to the rap icon rumor mill, today we look at what you don't know about the Illuminati. Number 10. The Illuminati Symbol Thanks to viral memes on social media, the common visual associated with the Illuminati has made the jump from a weird Tom Hanks hairdo circa the Da Vinci Code to the iconic pyramid with an eye above it. Unfortunately, that symbol has nothing to do with the Illuminati, according to historians. The Eye of Providence, as it's called, is actually a symbol belonging to Freemasonry. This depiction of a floating eye above a pyramid is often attributed to the Illuminati, however, Freemasons predate them by nearly two decades at least. Many of the Illuminati's practices came from Freemasonry, though, so it's understandable how this common confusion arises. Number 9. Who were they? Whether convinced by the Da Vinci Code author Dan Brown's novels and their subsequent movies, or through social media spun rumors regarding red carpet icons, there is a common misconception as to the origin and motives of the Illuminati. The secret society first got its start in the late 18th century with a Bavarian professor named Adam Weishaupt. Rather than adhere to the strict rules of his workplace at the Catholic University of Ingolstadt, Weishaupt decided to create a group that could freely share the ideals of the Age of the Enlightenment, a movement that put faith in logic, reason, and science over the teachings of religion. Even its namesake, Illuminati, means the Enlightened Ones in Latin. But what began as a secret club of a half-dozen members quickly snowballed into an organization of thousands, as more powerful and further-reaching members were recruited. Number 8. Rise to Power the Bavarian Illuminati lasted less than 12 years, being outlawed less than a decade after their inception. However, in a time of secret societies, their exploits, along with their iconic name, rituals, and practices, have made this organization the stuff of legends. The Illuminati first started making strides toward power with the recruitment of Adolf Freier Kniga, a Freemason noble from Lower Saxony. He used his resources and connections to recruit 2,000 more members, including the famous German writer Johann Wolfgang von Goethe along with many other influential individuals such as military officials, members of royalty, and college professors. But along with Kaniga and his recruits came a new element to the secret society, rituals, ceremonies, and a hierarchical structure. These elements would not only be the wedge that eventually caused a rift between Weisop and Kaniga, but also some of the most defining characteristics of the Illuminati and all secret societies today. The Illuminati eventually came crashing down when Weishaupt's influence nearly led to the annexation of Bavaria by Austria, a move only derailed by the new ruler of Bavaria's outlawing of the Illuminati and all secret societies. Weishaupt's leadership role was revealed not long after, and he escaped to live in exile. Number 7. Legacy Since the Bavarian Illuminati, many have attempted to restart the organization, but never to such success as the original group of the late 18th century. Today, there are some fraternal groups that utilize the Illuminati namesake in some shape or form, with some even claiming to have bloodline ties to the original organization. There's even a website where you can apparently apply to join the Illuminati. These organizations have no evidence indicating infiltration of positions of power, though, and thus don't seem to have any real power. While it did take a turn toward less than virtuous, it is worth noting that the Bavarian incarnation of the Illuminati never approached the size of the foreboding New World Order many theorists tend to fear today. Scares would come and go of a resurgence, but they would be just that, fear brought on by the tale of the Illuminati and the quick yet brief expanse of their influence. Number 6. Not the only secret society While many think of the Illuminati as a deep, infiltrating, wide-reaching organization capable of mass political control, one detail tends to be forgotten today. They weren't the only ones. In the Age of the Enlightenment, the Illuminati were one of many secret societies that sprang forth in the pursuit of countering the overbearing sovereignty of the monarchy and the church. One of the most famous and influential organizations were the Freemasons. Many of their practices in terms of structural ranking and private ceremonies were used as the blueprint for how the Illuminati would come to function. In comparison, Freemasonry has a much more expansive history and membership than the Illuminati. Perhaps it's the discrepancy in knowledge regarding the two societies that makes the mystery of the Illuminati all the more alluring. Regardless, the Freemasons have undergone their own persecution born of paranoia thanks to efforts in the early 19th century to associate them more closely with the legacy of the Illuminati. Along with the Freemasons, another secret society would play a major role in the legacy of the Illuminati, the Order of the Golden and Rosy Cross. This group may not have the recognition of the other two in modern times, 
However, in the 1700s, this organization had spread its reach from Berlin to Prague and from Poland to Russia. Believing heavily in alchemy, spirituality, and mysticism, the Order of the Golden and Rosy Cross had a different take on the Age of the Enlightenment and made it a goal to take down the Illuminati. Using connections within the Bavarian government, it was the Order of the Golden and Rosy Cross that convinced the King of Bavaria to ban the Illuminati. Some authors believe this order to be behind the anxiety-prodding scare tactics that resulted in the Illuminati's notorious reputation following the group's disbanding. Number 5. Rituals When the Illuminati is depicted in pop culture, more often than not it's portrayed with candlelit ceremonies, hooded figures, and ominous chants reverberating through an old stone structure. Unfortunately, these rituals often have nothing to do with the Illuminati at all. When it comes to rituals and ceremonies, the Illuminati mimicked the Freemasons. Some of the more concrete rituals that can be found regarding the Illuminati involve their naming and ranking systems. First introduced by founder Adam Weishaupt, members of the Illuminati would refer to one another with code names such as Ajax, Philo, and Tiberius, paying homage to the Greek philosophers and figures they idolized through the Age of Enlightenment. Weishaupt himself was known as Spartacus. The rankings of the organization came with the recruitment of Adolf Kaniga and his three-tier system composed of the Nursery, the Masonic Grades, and the Mysteries. Members of the Nursery were categorized as the Novitiate, the Minerva, or the Illumitus Minor. Members of the Masonic Grades were either apprentices, companions, or masters in the lower grades of Scottish novices and Scottish knights in the higher grades. And members of the Mysteries were the Priest, the Prince, the Mage, and the King. Each increase in rank came with an accompanying ritual. However, scholars believe the highest ranks of the mysteries had no such rituals drafted. Number 4. Revolutionary Involvement While historians have found the Illuminati ceased to be by 1788 following their outlawing in Bavaria, that didn't stop the periodic resurgence of paranoia surrounding the secret society. In the late 1790s, two authors released books publicizing the theory that not only did the Illuminati continue to exist, but that they were behind the French Revolution. These works, Augustine Burroughs' Memoirs Illustrating the History of Jacobinism and Proofs of Conspiracy by John Robinson, would make their way around Europe in no time, inspiring reprints and paraphrased versions. In a short while, these books even reached New England, setting the stage for the American anti-Masonic movement of the early 19th century. It is believed by some historians that the workers' revolts of 1848 were so violently sequestered by authorities due in part to the effects these books had on the reader's anxiety. The Illuminati scare began again in the 20th century during and after the Second World War in association with anti-communist sentiments. The right-wing populist group known as the John Birch Society is just one example of the various powers that continued to plant seeds of worry and doubt in the public with the idea that a looming secret society controlled every aspect of the world as we know it. The fear evoked by the Illuminati's existence and influence had a ripple effect that would expand for decades. Major historical events from disastrous accidents to celebrity tragedy have been attributed to Illuminati involvement by those who have succumbed to the unfounded dread of potential secret societies operating among us. Number 3. Hip-Hop Illuminati Today's most common theories regarding the Illuminati revolve around its membership. Never mind historians concluded the organization itself ceased to exist 230 years ago. Most theorists that believe the Illuminati is still an existent secret society accuse celebrities such as Beyonce, Jay-Z, and Kanye West. As possibly the first reference to the Illuminati in hip-hop in 1995, Prodigy from the rap group Mob Deep rapped the line, Illuminati want my soul, mind, and body, on a track called I Shot Ya. When Prodigy passed at the young age of 42, he was reportedly in the middle of writing an album about the Illuminati. Prodigy suffered from sickle cell anemia and was in the hospital for a routine visit when he choked on an egg on June 20, 2017. Why is the concept of Illuminati popular in hip-hop music? The central idea is that a small group of powerful people in the media use musicians to help secretly shape the popular opinions of the unthinking masses. And with a long history of mistreatment including secret experiments such as the Tuskegee study, it makes sense that American black culture might embrace theories of a small distrustful group of people in control. Prodigy said, They're messing with people's senses, their mental energies. Number 2. Fiction The Illuminati may not be interfering with our day-to-day -day lives in reality, but when it comes to our media, they can be found everywhere. In Marvel Comics, there are a group composed of the world's most powerful, super-powered leaders operating behind closed doors. That's right, Iron Man is in the Illuminati. 
Films like Stanley Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut portray a vague, secret society that's infiltrated every aspect of the world, mimicking the hyperbolized legacy of the Illuminati. The works of Dan Brown, both on paper and screen, go to great lengths to deepen this hyperbolization, referring to the society by name and essentially crafting a whole new and wholly untrue lore for the current generation. From video games to pro wrestling, the archetype of a roguish secret society composed of the rich and powerful continues to be a reliable villain in modern media. Number 1. Amplifying Fears They may not be lurking in every penthouse office and government capital, but it's undeniable the legend surrounding the Illuminati has affected our media and thus our everyday life. The fear of a larger entity at work behind the scenes is very apparent to all sides of the political spectrum in 2018 and makes itself known daily through the panicked posts of social media theorists. But citing the Illuminati as a source of fear only tends to feed into the beliefs theorists already hold regarding the Illuminati. The organization uses fear as its weapon of choice. The believed involvement of the Illuminati in world events is to cause fear, or so theorists claim, leading to the public's inevitable willingness to give up privacy and other rights in favor of safety. Evidence of a modern Illuminati's existence is fictional at best, but if history and Hollywood have taught us anything, it will probably take more than that to seize humankind's fear of the unknown.